Google Drive or Dropbox, which one is right for your business? What are these services anyway? Google Drive and Dropbox are services that allow you to share your work in the cloud. This allows you to collaborate and share documents easily from any device. Let's say you're on vacation away from your computer and you suddenly realize that you forgot to send that file to that guy. You walk down to the business center in the hotel, you get on the computer, you log in to either Dropbox or Google Drive, you get the file and you share it with the guy. Or let's say you're out hiking and you remember that you needed to get that spreadsheet to that woman. So you pull out your phone, you open up Dropbox or Google Drive and you send it. Now I'm not endorsing working while hiking. I am not for that. I am against that. But I'm just saying this comes in pretty handy. And cloud storage just makes sense for a whole slew of other reasons. So let's say, God forbid, a tragedy strikes and your home or office is damaged from a hurricane or a tornado or whatever. Being able to access your important files and documents via cloud storage can make all the difference. But which one is better? Well, I use both services, but that's only because I was late to the party with Google Drive. If I was starting from scratch, I'd probably just use Google Drive. For one thing, it is much less expensive and included with Google Drive is a whole suite of free office products like Google Slides, which is what I'm using right now in this presentation, Google Docs, Google Forms, Google Sheets, Google Sites, and on and on. It's just incredibly convenient. Dropbox is probably easier to share. There's less clicks involved to ultimately share whatever file or document that you want to share out of Dropbox. And it's probably a better option for photographers uh, and graphic designers. But with either of these services, whether you use Dropbox or Google Drive, it's really important that things are well organized. Even if you don't have a team, I'm sure we all know that feeling of trying to find a certain file and having no clue what we named it or where we put it put it. Getting your files organized is worth the time it's going to take you on the front end because it's going to save you so much time in the long run. And it's just going to make your day-to-day workflow so much more enjoyable. I'm going to show you how you can put Google Drive in your finder. So the first step is to go to Google Drive and go here and click download drive. Download for Mac or PC if you have a PC. Okay, now we're going to open our Finder. And under Devices, you're going to see your computer. So click on that and then click on the hard drive icon. Then you're going to select the Users folder. And then we're going to select the little house icon that probably has your name by it. We're going to find that Google Drive folder. It's right there. Then you're going to click the Command button on your keyboard because that allows you to sort of jiggle this around. Right here in the little bar will appear and we're gonna put it right there. So now, that's all there is to it. So now, we're gonna go back to composing our email and we're gonna click Attachment and right there in Google Drive, we have access to everything now at our fingertips. The file structure I'm gonna show you is how I have my files set up. And this is what makes sense for my business. You're going to want to obviously adjust this to make sense for your business. My files are very much structured for managing my online course creation and content creation in general. If you don't create online courses, you will simply set these up in a way that makes sense for your business. There are a few things I want you to notice here. First, I've put a number and an underscore in front of each folder. Establishing a naming convention right off the bat is key for staying organized. Whatever system you develop, stick with it and be consistent. If you have a team, put the rules on a document and add it to your team folder so everyone knows the system. And if you don't have a team, write it down so that you don't forget your system. Now let's look at what each folder is named. I have this folder here that says 2017, okay? 
And that is, well, you're going to see what's inside that in just a moment. Then there is evergreen. That's obviously content that's evergreen. Free content, which would be like my blog posts or webinars that I do. Um, personal is just what it says. Screenshots, that's where I put, I drag at the end of the day, all the screenshots that I've taken. I The ones that I don't throw away, I bring into here. And I usually clean that out about once every week or two. Resources, this tends to be uh, things like research that I, that I do, Pew Research articles, um, things that, uh, you know, statistics, that sort of thing I'll put in here, or infographics. And then uh, team management is here in Folder 7. So let's click into this one, 2017. So, and, and keep in mind, I want you to look at the top of our screen where it says My Drive and then uh, 2017. As we click through our folders, the path that we're taking shows up at the top of our screen, okay? So, um, we see programs, admin, clients, and affiliate stuff. So, it doesn't seem like a lot to happen in a whole year, but this pretty much covers everything that happens in a year. So, let's click into programs. So now what you're seeing is all the programs that um, I have or will create in 2017. So let's click into the Productivity Power Pack. And now you see Members and Promotions. Members is all the content that you, the members, receive. And Promotions is anything I do that is promotional to promote the course. So let's click into Members. So each of these is pretty self-explanatory, but you see modules, Facebook group, membership site, graphics, research, and admin. But I want you to see how I have modules set up, okay? So let's click into that folder. So in modules, this is where you see all the modules that are going to be included in the course. What I love about setting this up before I ever even begin a course is that it almost feels like most of the work is done even if I haven't created a single lesson. It's my roadmap. I've thought through what I wanted to include and it's there ready for me to drop the content in. So now let's click on one of the module folders. So for every one of those module folders, they each have this file structure inside. Slide deck, raw video, edited video, cheat sheet, and transcript. Now. This is actually a wonderful task to give to your VA to set up all these folders. It's a little bit time consuming, but once it's done, it's done and you are going to kiss yourself once you have this in place. And also, I'm going to show you a quick way to do this. Now, let's leave the slide deck and actually go into Google Drive so I can show you um, how to set these up uh, in real time so you can sort of see the mechanics of how to do it. So here we are inside of Google Drive. And across the top, Google Drive has just put some stuff up there that they that I've I've used recently and Google Drive assumes that I might want to access ac access these again cuz I've accessed them several times. So it's the the robot side of Google Drive trying to anticipate my needs. So that's what you see across the top. On the left, you're gonna see this shared with me. So anytime someone shares permissions on a document or something inside of Google Drive and they add your name, but you don't actually own it, it's gonna show up right here. So what you can do and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna choose add to my drive. So now it's been added to my drive and I can do that with any of these. But I just want to point this out to you because sometimes you could be looking for something and forget that, hey, I didn't actually own that. So and so sent that to me and shared that with me. Recent is just what it sounds like. These are recent documents that you've that you've opened or interacted with. Google Photos, where you can put photos, starred. Um, so these are any folders that you've starred, and this is nice if you want quick access to something. And then, of course, trash is anything that you've put in the trash. So now 
Let's say we want to create a new folder. We're going to go up to the top left and click New. And we're going to choose Folder. And we're going to name this folder, uh, I'm going to say one under, whoops, one underscore test folder. And then Create. And there it is. Now, if I want to change the color of this folder, then I am going to click on it, right click on it, or double click on your trackpad, and then I'm going to click Change Color, scroll down here to Change Color, and then just pick a color. Now, um, it's a great idea if you are going to use a color coding system to make sure you write down the key, the color key that you're using and what it means, um, so that you so that you don't forget. Um, right now, these colors don't mean a lot to me other than evergreen, I made green, and personal is red, meaning stop, do not enter. Um, and that's a warning to me that I don't share permissions on this folder. So we're going to go to this folder that we just created, and I am going to right click on it again. And I am going to, no I'm not, I'm not going to right click. I am going to double click and now I might want another folder within this folder. So I'm going to click new folder and this time I'll call it one underscore subfolder. Okay, so now let's back out to our main drive and as you can see we've got our test folder. Now when we click on that, there's our subfolder. And we could just keep going and going in that same uh, in that same manner as much as we, however far we want to break that down. So now I want you to see, um, if you notice on this blue folder that says free content, um, there's like a little person icon there. And uh, up here on 2016, there's a little person icon on that as well that indicates that this entire folder is being shared with someone. Now, I might not want to share the whole folder. I might just want to share parts of it. So for example, in this 2017 folder, I have my entire programs folder shared with someone or more than one person. And this is how you share um, a folder. So I'm gonna go over here to affiliate. Let's go to this affiliate folder and I'm going to right click or double two finger click on my trackpad and I'm going to click share. Now this is, this is the one complaint, if I hear any complaints about Google Drive, it's this. It's because you have to set your permissions just right or when you do give access to someone, a document or, to a, a document or a folder, if your permissions are shared incorrectly, then the person won't be able to open it and then you're going to get a message that says, I help, I can't open it and it, it's aggravating. Um, but if you do this correctly the first time, you shouldn't run into that, okay? So what I like to do is um, get a shareable link and then you'll notice it defaults and says anyone at Jen Laner Media with the link can view it. Well, that's very restrictive. So I'm going to click more and I'm going to say, um, anyone with a link, or I could just make it completely public for anyone on the internet who can find it and access it. In this case, I just want anyone who has a link to be able to access it. And then I'm going to click save. Oops, let's go back to this. Um, it says anyone with the link can view. So this is something you need to think about it, about if you're, if you're collaborating on this document with someone, then you want to make sure that you click more and say anyone with the link can organize, add, and edit, or can view only. Okay, so you need to think about that. Then you're just going to copy the link and give that link to the person. Or you can type their email in and um, and then click done, and then they will get the invitation but they will still run into trouble if you invite them with their email address. Let's say um, you send it to bettylou at gmail.com, but Betty Lou logs into um, 
uh, clicks a link, clicks the invitation um, another time from a different address, like she's logged in with a different address, then Betty Lou is going to have trouble accessing it. So um, this part takes a little bit of practice, but once you understand it, it's really no sweat. Finally, what I want to show you is how um, you can, once you get a one folder set up, okay, so let's say, let's go back to programs and our productivity power pack and members, modules, welcome. Okay, so let's say we've, we've gone to the trouble and, we've, and we know that every one of our folders is going to need this, these subfolders just as they are. Okay, so now if you want to copy those folders, um, you'll need to go into the Google Drive over here. Not, it's you've downloaded the Google Drive app into your computer, right? And so you're going to click here and then you're going to go to Google Drive and then we're going to go to 2017 Programs, Productivity Power Pack, Members, Modules. All right, and so there is that tree that we want to copy. So we're going to click each of them. I'm holding down the shift key and then I'm clicking on them and now I'm going to right click and click and scroll down to copy five items. Then now I'm going to come over, I have two preview windows open so I can do this easily. Now I'm going to go over to um, this test folder and I'll click into that subfolder and now I'm going to click, I'm going to right click on my mouse or use two fingers on my trackpad and I'm going to click paste five items. And the beauty is it's actually not going to copy any, any of the content inside these folders. It's just going to create, it's just going to um, copy the, the folders themselves. So that's great uh, for you because you're not going to have to delete stuff. You're just going to when you lay out your program, you can uh, just copy, paste, copy, paste, and have all of this set up in no time.